Welcome to Change Your POV. That's right. I am not Eddie Lazary. I am Jeff Adamick. And this Friday, right here, right now, you are not going to hear Eddie on this episode. He has given me the reins to take over the flagship show for the Change Your POV podcast network. And we're going to be talking a little bit about finding something new to do with your life, getting out there and making it happen. Welcome. Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of Changing Hearts and Minds that's not Changing Hearts and Minds. This is actually Attack Friday, and yes, you are not hearing something wrong. Don't go back and reboot it. This is Jeff Adamick. I am on for a special episode. However, I am not alone. And what's really cool about today's episode is for the first time since I've been on Change Your POV as a host, actually, I think this is other than some of the online uh, Patreon or video stuff. This is going to be the first time that me and this gentleman are on together. Uh, it's actually more like his show that I'm a guest on, but I guess I'm running the train. We've got uh, Bennett Tanton, Grandpa Bennett, as we like to call him. Bennett, how you doing, buddy? Uh, uh, <laughs> Grandpa Bennett, my ass. Yes. How are you, Jeff? I'm I'm doing fine. How's that? Yeah, how, Grandpa Bennett's ass. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. So. Why, why are you all hearing me and Bennett together on this Friday episode? Those of you who uh, are fans of my show and, and go and watch my stupid Facebook Live posts and everything that I do on the weekends and sometimes during the day, you guys know that last week I was a guest on Good Morning Fayetteville on WFNC, Goldie in the Morning, and I was on as a guest talking about my podcast and Change Your POV Podcast Network. Now, I have been given a copy of that audio footage, and it's going to be broken down into two parts as it was when it aired. So you'll hear part one and part two, and then me and Bennett are going to talk about some of the content that's in inside that show, and we're going to talk about what our source of today's show is, which is uh, finding finding and following whatever whatever you're passionate about and whatever whatever you you find. Uh, interesting and how to, when you get out of the military, whether you're transitioning from a job, finding some way of establishing something you're passionate about because Bennett, correct me if I'm wrong, man, but that old adage that if you find something that you love to do, you never work a day in your life. Uh, Would you agree with that? I would completely agree with that. And I guess, I guess one of the best ways to describe this too, uh, as we speak about veterans in language that they can understand. So we talk about passion but really, a really good way to describe it is to find your new mission. That I would agree. So, so if 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 you phrase it like that, I find that a lot of guys it clicks. Like it's not. It's I mean, yes, it's going to be your passion, but finding your new mission and what you really want to do, and that's that's what this is going to be about for the most part. So, before we go into the topic that me and Ben are going to talk to you about, let's get part one of the uh, interview that I did with Goldie on Good Morning Fayetteville out of the way. Uh, we're going to have a pause here. You people at home who are listening are going to hear the interview. Me and Bennett have heard it plenty of times, so we'll actually pause ourselves. This is for you guys. We will come back after the first half of the interview, and we will start talking a little bit about about the passion. And We'll even talk a little bit maybe about what I talk about in the interview, which is very much in line with today's topic, which sure. is... Which, which is finding your new mission. So here, here I am uh, with Goldie, radio host here in Fayetteville, very well known in Fayetteville. Those of you in Fayetteville will know him. And, and here we go. Here's his, here's his interview with me. Talk a little about this podcast because I heard you've got over like 25, 26,000 subscribers on iTunes to this thing. Our downloads are hovering in the high numbers and they're getting bigger every single week. Uh, what happened was... I had gotten out. My story had taken me from being a medically retired guy to a person who was kind of lost, not knowing what to do with my life. Uh, wasn't happy with what I was doing. Started trying to find a new job, so I started going to school for IT. 
I was successful at it. I ended up working my butt off well past what I should have been doing at the age I was doing it at and got a job at Cisco. And then after being invited back a few times to the school I went to and asked to speak at the school, I ended up being asked to be a guest on this podcast. So it was mm-hmm. called Change Your POV Podcast. It was a bunch of veterans out of the, the New England area who were running a podcast. I came on as a guest. The guest appearance turned into a, hey, do you want to do another guest appearance? Do you want to be, you know, help, help us do uh, a guest host appearance? And then they asked me if I wanted my own Wednesday show on that podcast network. Nice. And uh, I understand what was going on. You know, these guys, they have all these regular military guys in there. And then they had a special forces guy who was able to bridge their ability to get out there and talk to other guys and get more listeners in special forces and special operations. And so I used that to my advantage to, to uh, get myself my show on there. And then I told them I'll be the wild card. I don't have any kind of specific type of format. I do everything from talking about military history to talking about leadership. Everything that, that people want to hear about that's not directed specifically just towards how to build your resume, how to do this, how to do that. Right. Uh, just for example, this week we released a Halloween episode. It has nothing to do with military at all. It's just a bunch of different military veterans and some other guests come on and tell their own little spooky stories and some you know, kind of true crime stuff. So I kind of run the gambit over everything, just, and I enjoy it. It gives me something to do. It's a hobby. So how long have you been doing this by yourself now? How long have you had your show? My show I've had now for about eight months. Very nice. And you're enjoying it, obviously. I love it. And right I at the it. top here, let's tell people where they go to find this show that we're going to talk about for the next five uh, or seven minutes here. Right. Uh, you can either go onto iTunes and search Jeff Adamick, J-E-F-F-A-D-A-M-E-C, and as iTunes does, it'll list all the shows. Mm-hmm. You can go and search Change Your POV. POV as in point of view, or you can go to the website, and the website is www.changeyourpov.com, and you can see the down, you'll see the podcast uh, link, you click on the podcast link, and all the different podcasts drop down. My podcast is called Changing Hearts and Minds, so the Special Forces, you know, winning the Hearts and Minds, because I'm on the Change Your POV podcast, I twisted the name around, made it fit, so it's Changing Hearts and Minds with Jeff Adamick, which is the Wednesday show on the Change Your POV podcast podcast network love that talk a little about your military service and what you did while you were in well i I graduated from high school i'm from new jersey from new jersey Jersey. so i should say when jeff walked in and he saw my yankees sign and he saw my new york giants picture right away we were bonded at the hip yeah it was it was great because (laughs) i I had uh, both a feeling of great joy to see the yankee stuff on the wall and an immediate feeling of ill sickness when I saw the giant stuff, <laughs> knowing the nightmare that right now is the giant season. Yes, me too. <laughs> so I got out of the military. I got it into the military in 1995. I literally walked off of my graduation field in high school directly to the recruiter's car, straight to basic mm-hmm. training. Stationed in Fort Bragg, North Carolina for almost the entire 18 years I was in. Starting off with just a regular medic, going on to be a ranger, and then going on to be a Green Beret and spent the last uh, 10 years as a Green Beret in 3rd Special Forces Group right here on Fort Bragg. Uh, I got injured in 2009. I got uh, blown up during an ambush and ended up uh, giving me severe back injuries, a traumatic brain injury. And then I got the parting gift of post-traumatic stress disorder, which mm-hmm. I, you know, I suffered with for a good portion of about three four years. Uh, however, I was able to recognize, and through, through the love of my wife and kids, I was able to recognize the fact that I needed to get help, and thank God I didn't become a statistic. So a lot of what I do now is focused on changing the outlook of what PTSD is. Uh, the fact that we have so many people who think it's some kind of an illness or a cowardice and stuff like that, and it's changing slowly but surely, but I get out there and I tell people, hey, if, if someone who's a Green Beret, who's got a silver star, who is, you know, all these things that other people see, which I don't see, if I can get help, if I can admit that I need to get help and, and get it, and look at how successful I can be, then so can anyone else. And so that's, that's my big focus, especially with helping veterans, is getting them to work past that, that stigma and that, that self, the self-defeating, you know, trying to hide or, or not asking for help when they need it. And that's, that's a big focus of a lot of what well, I Where did you go for help with the PTSD? Well, my wife had come to me and told me that I needed, you know, mm-hmm. it was one of those things where my wife had just finally said, hey, look, you got to get help. Um, and I was, well, good enough at the time to go and just walk right in, self, self-referral self at Fort Bragg. Now, I'm just as sure as everyone else is, just as everyone else has problems where I didn't find the right doctor at first. I went through three or four therapists before I finally got one that was an off-post the, uh, guy that, that actually reached out and I was able to connect with him. I was able to find some way to be able to talk to this guy. He was a former Special Forces guy himself. And I think that's where the link, but it was just more about not giving up. You know, you don't quit in the military. They, they teach you that all right. the time. And I think if you don't quit when you get out, 
and you apply that same kind of mentality, you know, the warrior mindset doesn't stop just because you stop being a soldier. None, none of our jobs in the military have the word warrior in them. So warrior is more of a state of mind than it is an actual job. So if you live your life that way and you don't quit and never quit, you'll find a way to be able to get through anything. All right, that, that was the first half of uh, the two parts that I did, the two segments that I was on with. Um, what I, what I want to talk about is, is you guys who have heard me on the show before, you've heard my story uh, the very first time I was on. And so I'm going to actually pose a question to Bennett. Uh, I know that Eddie, <laughs> Eddie does a lot of the, the tracking down of guests for, for him and Bennett. And, and as those of you who know Bennett and love hearing Grandpa Bennett uh, do his shows that he does, you guys know that he not only is on the Change Your POV podcast network, he also does Cigars and Sea Stories with our, with, uh, with our good friend Michael Penny. He knows, he knows a lot about the, the podcasting, uh, I guess, community and stuff like that. So, yeah, Bennett, I think what was, I'm like 600 hours in. <laughs> Bennett is – he's got as much time on podcasts as Joe Rogan. Um, <laughs> oh. without, without we've got <laughs> – Not we, quite that many. If, we could, yeah, just, if we could just get – if we could just get the numbers that Joe Rogan has to Bennett, we'd, we'd all be set. So, Bennett, if you could uh, – and this – you know, it's going to se- seem a little self-serving for me, but so everyone gives you the idea of – of why following a new mission or a new passion is so important. What was it about me that got you guys wanting to bring me on the show initially? Well, part of All right. So, so Eddie found you basically. Right. Um, and then, and then I really, so after, cause I wasn't there for the initial, um, interview. Right. Right. You were trying to get on, but there was some, we were having some technical difficulties. Some technical. So either way, when I listened to it later, like later that afternoon or, Actually, it was the next day. I was like, dude, this is powerful shit, right? So I started stalking you and figuring out exactly what, because that's my background in, in in intelligence and reconnaissance and everything else. And so I'm like finding everything I can out about Jeff Adamick, right? So really what it came down to then is like your message had a lot of clarity with me, Um and struggles that I had been through and, and everything like that. So I was like, this guy is perfect for what we're trying to do here. So, um, I really, I mean, that's really what it was is that your message spoke to me. And that for me though, that takes a lot because I, I do, this is what I do. I listen to podcast after podcast. I read article after article and for a message to touch me means it's a pretty solid message. Right. Um, so for me, that's what it was is what you were talking about spoke to me. Uh, and I was like, all right, well, we gotta, we gotta do something here with this guy. And it wasn't necessarily like your background. It wasn't like an ooh and ah, and as you know, you know me pretty well yes, sir. at this point and I could give a shit. Right. You know what I mean? Right. A, a guy is a guy. And, and, but what it, what it did is I looked at your whole story from, from when you were a kid all the way up and it, there was a lot of correlation. So I got it, man. So you're, you're, it just was, it was just awesome. And I was like, we got to have this guy on. And, and then it just morphed into what it is now. Right. Right. Um, so, so that's what it was is I saw the, the, the actual, uh, talent and and the message was there even back then um so that's what sparked it for me and i was like eddie on this shit let's go right and it didn't take very long i mean i think it was a week later i had yeah. the no shit there i was episode with eddie uh which yep. which guys to be quite honest with you eddie is very good at at finding new technology and, and new methods for us to be able to record and get our message out and really what cha- no shit there I was was in actuality was a test run of a new of a thing called Zoom which w- which was an, an application that he had he had downloaded and was giving a shot and so we ran Zoom as like a test run and it was just so good that that he decided to to go ahead and publish it uh, as as an episode and to bring in some more of the guests or more of the hosts from Change Your POV Network, I, I have spoken about this before, but I had been following on social media Dwayne France before I ever knew who Eddie and Bennett were personally. Now, I listening like much like Bennett, I had listened to um, 
podcast after podcast. I read article after article. Uh, my my personal story and my personal journey from from being everything I've ever wanted to be in life, which which was a special operations guy, to being everything I never wanted to be. You know, I was I was damaged. I was broken. I was I was lost physically, mentally, and and at some points even just in actuality, just missing. You know, I mean, you you could I was there, but I wasn't there. If you guys can understand what I'm saying. And it took me a long time to get back to being somebody that had focus and drive. And as you guys have heard in my story, and I won't rehash it out, but I didn't even realize that I was back on track. Uh, I, it was pointed out to me by my wife, who had seen me completely back. I had like a intent and a, and a centerness to me. A uh, there was not, a, I guess, not a glow would be the word, but there was a a calm that that existed in me that had been missing for quite a long time. And it all came about from the fact that I was stepping outside my comfort zone, uh, chasing down things that I, I didn't think were within my ability or realm or even things I should be doing. And because I was doing all that and making myself almost uncomfortable by getting up so early and driving so much and going from here to there and back again and trying to get these certifications in, in, in uh, information technology, that I was finally where I, where I was comfortable at as far as my personal view of myself and it all came down to how I viewed myself and I fa- I was able to find my new mission my new passion really through you guys and Dwayne because Dwayne has a way of talking to veterans that is just so he breaks it down Barney style you know if, if you want right. to you know he breaks it yeah, down like a sure. shotgun you know that's that's yeah, what man. I and he's so good at that that I had been reading and listening and interacting with him here and there well before I ever met Eddie and Bennett and then when he was connected with any embedded, it was right at that moment that I said, these guys are on to something and I don't want to hijack or ride their coattails, but I want to help them get the message out because I know, and this is an arrogance that I know I have, but coming up in a, in a background where I was, I did a lot of drama in high school. I went to a performing arts high school and you know, my intent was to go to Juilliard and be an actor and, you know, I was into music and everything. I know that being able to be a showman and my time as a Green Beret and learning how to teach and instruct was a perfect amount of different types of skills and abilities and talents and passions that I had that it just fit for being in a podcast, being in something that mixes entertainment with instruction and with, you know, helping others get to where they need to be at to be successful, to be valuable, and to be able to be able to get up in the morning, look at themselves in the mirror, and be happy with who they are. And that is the ultimate thing. And Dwayne got me there through his writing in some aspects. And then Eddie and Bennett pushed me over the edge by giving me an outlet to be able to do it. So not to get emotional with you guys, but I really want to just thank specifically Bennett, you, Eddie, and Dwayne, for helping me get to being being a productive member of of the world that I live in, and, and so I, I am able to do things and participate in things and follow childhood dreams that I have of being a member of media in some aspect, while right. also being able to go out and do the things that are beneficial for others, not for me. Because guys, you know, you've heard us say it before. I make no money doing what I'm doing when I when it comes to the podcast. Bennett is making no money. Every single dime that we get from you guys from Patreon and everything else like that goes back into the shows. And it still is not enough. Go to patreon.com and, and, and donate if you can. It still is not enough to <laughs> turn us a profit. I mean, in a perfect world, we'd all be working this job, but just this job. And for right. God's sakes, I tell people all the time, if you think what we get, you get from us now is good, I challenge you to make us, make us do this for a living. Because yeah. you will see make things this full time. <laughs> yeah, make it full time for us because shit, you will see shit things. Shit, get scary. Oh yeah, we, we would we would we would give uh, we would give them all a run for their money. So th- thank you guys <laughs> for giving me that because it really is a gift that I, I look at it as a gift to me, and so I, I really just want to thank you guys for it. And that's why I'm, I'm constantly telling you guys, what can I do to help? I hold others yeah. accountable for what they can do to help, and that's just because of of how much it means to me. So having said all that. Let's go ahead and we're going to go and play part two, which part two is not going to be as much about my journey and connection with, with them. It's going to be a little bit more about my military uh, stuff, and uh, you'll hear that in yep. a second. And we'll go over it real quick. Here we go. Let's play part two of Good Morning Fayetteville interview with myself and Goldie. 
I know that uh, we mentioned you are a Silver Star recipient. You've also got, uh, I think, four Bronze Stars. Yes, sir. You got the Purple Heart. Obviously, you were injured. And then something else I saw on your resume that interests me, because a good friend of mine trains canines. Yes. You did some of that. How did you get yourself into that? Well, when I was in 3rd Special Forces Group, I was instructing a course that is run by 3rd Special Forces Group called Special Forces Advanced Urban Combat. During that time, the SF community was starting to stand up their canine program, and they were looking for people to be the canine handlers, and mm-hmm. I love dogs. Love dogs. So I volunteered. I became one of the first two 3rd Special Forces Group canine handlers, and from that I went to every single school that I could possibly go to, uh, trainer school, all that kind of stuff, was instructing, got out, and was even working out in, uh, out in Sanford t- uh, instructing cani- uh, police canines for a couple of years while I was still going to school for IT. So I, I did all that. Matt, when I got injured, when I got injured, I was a canine handler. Thank God the dog did not get injured. Uh, he went on to have a long and illustrious career. His name is Marco. He's one of the best dogs third group has um, or had. Uh, I think he's retired now. But you know, So I was one of the first guys who did that, and I loved it. Absolutely loved That's it. That's great because I have a good friend, Amy Thaler, who trains canines up in D.C., and I was up in D.C. last weekend. I was hoping to see her, but she was at a canine graduation right. in Connecticut. Right. Yeah. So missed her. Well, she, I said, what, you're going to a, a dog graduation? And she explained it all to me. Yeah. But it's good stuff. Talk a little about when soldiers are talking to you, especially people that listen to your podcast. Right. Uh, Talking with Jeff Adamick, if you're just joining us, who has a podcast discussing, uh, you discuss life after military. What is, what are the concerns that the soldiers are telling you, and do you get ideas from them to talk about on your podcast? Yes, absolutely. Uh, A lot of, a lot of the soldiers right now, their concern is that they don't think that what they did in the military is understood by the civilian world. Uh, how to how to transfer their their skills and their abilities as a military member into the civilian world, uh, especially in corporate environments. They're absolutely right. There there is a disconnect. But the problem is is that many of these veterans are coming out and are having they have issues that are far beyond just not having a job. And one of the problems that a lot of veterans have nowadays, and forgive me guys for saying this, but we allow ourselves to become a little entitled. And we think that people owe us something for our service. Now, it's not across the board everyone that does that, but it is an issue that even I had at certain points. So I should have a job because I served this many years. But you have to be willing to sacrifice and put in the work. You're absolutely right. If you're getting a job that is below you, you're, very, you're probably right. It probably is below you. So what you need to do is you need to take that job and do it to the best of your ability so that they can see your value and move you up. And that seems to be an issue that a lot of guys have. Another thing is, is that they don't know how to write their resumes. They don't know how to transcribe what they have did into a civilian mindset. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, nothing against the military way of training guys when they're getting out. But if I have a 20, 20 people who are getting out of the military and I give them a class on resumes and the one person in the class who does a really good job at it gets hired to work at that place teaching people how to do resumes, what experience do they have in the outside world other than the fact that they can write really well? So they're behind, in my opinion – they're behind the curve as for what is the current situation out in the marketplace and what is the current way that they want to see things written and what skills they have. So basically it's a lot about patience and asking questions. And the big thing no one wants to do, ask for help. Get out there and find people that have been successful and ask them what they've done and try to mimic and emulate the way that they're doing their, living their lives. So as you do these podcasts and as you, as you talk about life after the military – do you offer solutions? Do you tell these soldiers where do you go to learn how to write a resume and where do you go to do this? And do you offer, do you try to solve the problems? Well, we don't try to solve the problems. We try to give them, give them the steps that they can take to solve their own problems mm-hmm. on right. their own. Uh, for example, we have uh, Eddie Lazary, who is the guy who founded the Change Your POV podcast network. He has an MBA. He got out of the military. He was one of the first guys who really realized that there was a disconnect. He has an entire class. It's called the Seven Day Resume, and it's it's a twenty minute class every day for seven days on how to take your military experience and in seven days build your own resume. So what he does is yes, he offers a solution, but the solution is still you providing the solution sure. for yourself by taking the time to watch and listen to the class. So that you he point has. them in the right direction. Point them in the right direction, and then stand by and offer them assistance in the meanwhile using apps like Veterati, which is a mentoring network that the military has. It's veterans helping veterans. We were not going to get the veteran issues in America solved by waiting for someone else to solve them. We have to solve them ourselves because that's what we are. We're problem solvers and we're value added to our communities. We need to be the same for ourselves, not just 
waiting for someone else to solve it for us. Where do you do the podcast out of? I do the podcast out of my house. Nice. Yeah, I have my uh, my MacBook is open. I've got you know all the free stuff and, and the headsets, and I have people call in on Skype, and I do it all myself for free. And I have to at this point because I don't have any income coming from it, no matter how many people are listening. But it's all worth it. And I tell people all the time that if I spend the rest of my life, the rest of my life railing at the walls about my story and how to help people and how to do everything the right way, and one person is helped by all that effort, then all that time has been worth it for me. You're changing hearts and minds. I am changing hearts and minds. That's the name of the podcast, and it's Jeff Adamick. Tell folks again how they get your podcast on iTunes. You go to iTunes and you can search my name, Jeff Adamick, or Changing Hearts and Minds. That's not A-N-D, that's and the little sign and. Or you can go online and go to www.changeyourpov.com. Scroll down to the podcast, find Changing Hearts and Minds. You'll see a picture of a guy with an American flag behind him. He's a really sexy looking guy right there with a beard. Uh, that's me, regardless of what. <laughs> that's you how might I would think. describe you. That's exactly how yeah. I would. Yeah. I mean, and who wouldn't describe me like that? I agree. Jeff, it's a pleasure meeting you, a pleasure meeting a fellow New York Yankee fan. Can I also th- I want to thank Mia and Sharon LaBella, who were able to get me linked up with you and help you out? I, knew, I told them I would give them a shout out because they are such. They're class acts, those people. All right, guys. Uh, back from that. Um, Bennett, thoughts on part two? Anything you said in there you want to you wanna point out besides how great I am? No. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. No, I just thought it was a great interview. And um, <laughs> Goldie. Goldie made me laugh. Um because his voice is very oh he's, he's radio man oh he's a radio he, man he like radio he's man. like the epitome of radio man good morning fair no oh, oh you know, yeah one of those things it's freaking funny i tell people all the time they're like you you got a good radio voice and 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 bennett you do too even though your voice is raspy it's one of those unique voices uh very much like uh whoever that who's that new york radio guy that's he's on howard stern all the time you, you, you and i listen to him but uh oh, shit. sour shoes always makes fun of him but you've got one of those unique voices that fit. But people tell me they're like Jeff, you got a good radio voice. I'm like, go listen to Goldie. Because, go listen because, to Goldie because you want to listen to a good. I'm Howard Stern back in the 1980s compared to Goldie. You know, like <laughs> I mean, I got the high, yeah. higher pitch voice. I, I've got a bit of a speech impediment that I'm aware of, but I'm not. I'm definitely not that radio voice. So yeah, he really sticks it out there. And and he brought up the dog handling stuff, and he brought up the the Silver Star and and, and the awards and everything, and all that stuff's great, man. But what is it that we were able to do you, you and I, when we got out, that was, that was so much different than a lot of unfortunately statistical people are able to do is we were able to come to grips with what we were. We're damaged and that not, we're not broken. And that's something I tell people all the time. You're, you're, you're not broken, but you find me a person that wasn't damaged to begin with. I mean, you were, yeah. Yeah, every single one of us well, is damaged to begin with. Well, see, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny that I always find that the, and, and I'm, and, and I think about this quite a bit is that the most badass people that I meet just had adversity after adversity through their early lives, right? And right. and I, I, I'm a firm believer that that's part of why a lot of veterans, not all, of course, but a lot of veterans get it on a different level and are able to rise above that is because that's the – biggest way that we learn one of the biggest ways that we learn is through adversity if you don't have adversity what the hell are you learning about what you know so it's it's one of those aspects where i say you learn through two two things and this is from the military you know you learn through mindless repetition and blunt force trauma (laughs) and frankly you and i had childhoods that were full of a little blunt force trauma and then we learned the mindless repetition stuff later, right? right. So um, as, as we go through life, as long as we keep those things in mind and we, we actually try to learn from the adversities that we, that, that we run into, it just gives us perspective. And that's one of the reasons why guys like you and I will end up doing good things on the outside is because we've learned how to overcome that adversity and use it as a tool. Whereas in a lot of people just succumb to it and they get stuck in the suck, you know? So, um, I think that's an aspect that's, that's pretty admirable. And a lot of guys, and you know what, frankly, unfortunately, and, and 
it's not an unfortunate thing. It's just, frankly, you find a lot of that in guys that end up in special ops. Every freaking guy I've met, for the most part, is broken when they went in. Right, right. To special operations. Because they had this, they have this overwhelming urge to just do be the best. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and I know that, for me, stemmed from my childhood. Exactly. So, you know. Yeah, it's something I brought up with Dwayne uh, on one of the shows that I did. I think it was the Batman show. Um, I talk about how there is a seriously overwhelming statistical probability that a special operations person came from either a broken home, uh, damaged background, was abused, or was a, a underachiever as, as a child. And right. this this is all – I wasn't a – I didn't have a movie of the week childhood. You know, I didn't have that kind of a bad childhood family. There's family issues in my family, just as there is in many others. You guys have heard uh, on the Halloween show, my cousin Scott, come on. Uh, he is a very well adjusted and successful individual, as are most of the people in my family. So I'm not I don't come from one of these families where everything is broken. But how, however, I do find that there were there were times in my childhood growing up that when I when I hear other people's stories of childhood, I, I I'm like, man, that that sounds just glorious you know when <laughs> i might right. i didn't oh, have yeah, i didn't sure. have that grown up and it, one of the things that and i and i talk about this in one of the other episodes one of my favorite episodes of changing hearts and minds or change change your pov was the bennett stories i oh, mean yeah. co- quite honestly you blowing up your yard um <laughs> was one digging of the china baby yeah digging a china and blowing up the yard is one of the best stories ever because i mean we we both know that there, i look back at my childhood and and i am surprised that i lasted as long as i did with some of the absolute stupidity I did. And see, and see, what's really funny is that that story uh, at the time that that was was almost the end of my childhood. Right, right. So that was one of the most profa- profound memories that I have is because within a year, my dad was in jail, and my mom and I were like, you know, living hard. You know what I mean? Right. Um. And so that's, it's, you know, from, from young to eight, 10, life was pretty good as a kid goes. Right. 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 And then, and then I had to grow up really fast. So that's where, that was like one of my last really good memories of childhood, even though it was, you know, it's really funny now, but as, as we looked, it's like a stepping off point to like the rest of my life. And it's like, that's when the kid left Yeah. and digging the China was asinine after that but you know what i'm saying yes sir. So for me it's a very turning point story right and we both are fathers now and we spend a lot of our time and and i and i there's many sundays that i will look at bennett's uh post to us back and forth in slack our internal uh messaging service that we use for the host of the show and he's doing a lot of the same things i'm doing um i'm going to take my daughters here going to do this with with them here i'm spent and, I, and I'm very much the same way where I, I make sure that although I, I make sure they're challenged, my children, I make sure they're challenged and not spoiled. I also right, protect them. Sure. I protect them from the things I had to endure in, in my own childhood because that's what my job is. Um, that's what all of our jobs are as parents, as mentors, leaders, and whatever we're doing is to improve the situation or the world for the people that are coming after us. And that's something very important to keep in mind when you talk about what is it I'm doing with my life. If you cannot find a way to improve yourself, then find a way to improve somebody else's life because one or t- one or both of those is going to put you in a position where you're doing the right thing. Right. It's really funny. Um, my daughter, my 12-year-old. So I have four daughters for Jeff's audience that have not listened to me that often. Um, I've got four daughters. 20 ages, 22, 12, 11, and nine. So my 12 year old is doing cross country this year. She's a seventh grader modified cross country. She's great. She was finished on like the top seven in her team for the season. But <laughs> my, my wife always is like, Benny, you can't say that stuff. So <laughs> she'll get out there. And before she's running, I remember it was like her second or third meet and you hear me yell (laughs) and it's something that we would yell at like our troops or our soldiers, you know, it was fucking smoke them all. 
if you're not <laughs> if you're not puking by the, when you're done, you're not running hard enough. <laughs> True story. You know. So <laughs> she's like, she looks at me and she's like, Dad. And my wife is like, seriously, you can't say stuff like that. And I'm just like, the hell I can't. I will all day, all day long. Right. You know, if you're not puking when you're done, you're not running hard enough. That's right. I just laugh. So it's pretty funny. It's, 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 just, it's also, I think it's, it's cultural or not cultural, but generational. Because generational uh, I think, I think uh, even though uh, myself and Andrew are, are the, I guess you could say the babies of the group, um, you know, Bennett, Eddie and Dwayne and, and Kevin are older than me and Andrew. Now, Andrew is, is younger than I am even still. Uh, but I got in the army when I was 17. Now, I didn't really start growing up until I got out, in my opinion. So I'm um, still very young and uh, in, in heart minded. I'm also young, phys- younger physically, you know, I, I am just 40 this year. So but having said that, but I think all of us uh, maybe maybe Andrew might be in the generation behind, but he is he is not a millennial in no. in, in in brain no. at all. But we're we're generation we're Generation X, uh, Gen Xers. They are a unique, in my opinion, a very unique breed. We we still have the the greatest generation, the baby boomers. Uh, we still have a little bit of that reality of the world is a terrible place, and you have to find your way through it and work hard to be able to achieve things. Right. But yet. We also have the benefit of seeing what can happen, uh, specifically with baby boomers, when you apply too much of me into the scenario. Uh, the failure of the counterculture in the 60s uh, led to many strife and struggles for our country in the 80s. Um, and I believe that, I'm sorry to say for baby boomers who are going to hate this, but very, very many of you are, are just as responsible for that as the government or, or, or just you know, bad luck is having said that millennials are a direct result of all generations, because what I believe is that millennials are, we were talking about, you want to make lives better for our children. Well, we've gotten to the point where we've made it so protective and so simple that this is what happens. And unfortunately, I think we're in a turning point in our culture where we're going to see a shift back to, um, more of a responsibility is going to have to happen. Otherwise we're just going to, we're just going to eat ourselves up. I think. I, I would agree. I, I see where you're coming from with that yelling at the kids because I have the same thing where I try to apply the whole, you know, tough love. My, you know how it is, man. My, you don't have a son. So I've got the balance of having the son that I can push where the wife defends him up and down the line. Then I've got my princess, who you guys all know from, and you'll hear at the end of this episode, she is my unofficial Patreon spokesperson. Uh, I love getting her as part of the show because she, as far as her outgoing personality, she's me. But as far as her stubbornness, she is my wife. So everything that I hit heads with with my son, my wife and my daughter have that same thing. But yet I let, you know, she can do no wrong. She walks on water. My wife can do no wrong. She walks on water. And now you have both those people in the same house with one guy telling them both they can do no wrong and walk on water. It's like being in high school with the girl that you're dating and the girl that likes you. They're never going to get along <laughs> because they're both vying for, for that one attention. So I see a right. lot of guys like you, Bennett, a good friend of mine named Mark, wife, two daughters, I, I am scared to death of, of being stuck alone in my home with nothing but women uh, and with my son off to college. Now that's my reality. Let's focus or not focus. Let's, let's come back around full circle to the attack Friday. Uh, and you guys are so good at it. What does attack stand for Bennett for my, for my listeners? Actionable tips, tricks, and coachable knowledge. That's right. People we do, we do acronyms here because we're <clears throat> all military. Right. Fubar is is one that I love too. You know, fucked up beyond all recognition. But we'll stick with Attack sure. Friday for this time. So I'm going to use the word passion, but we both know I'm talking about mission. The tips, tricks, and actionable uh, knowledge that we're going to be giving you guys today is our own personal feelings on this. But I'm using for a source material an article written by Karina Gordon Barnes. Uh, she is a author. She wrote a article called Six Fresh Ways to Find Your Passion." And it is on themuse.com. Uh, I, will connect, I will link that inside the show notes page. She has six steps, how to find your passion. So here you are. You've gotten out of the military. Guys, this is all post dealing with your, your other issues. So you're at the moment where you are, you are not waking up in the middle of the night with nightmares. You're not drinking yourself into a hole. You're not out there with survivor's guilt. Uh, so we're going to assume that you've gotten or are getting a secure hold on that. Would that be fair, Bennett? Yeah. 
Yeah. And guys, that's just because you can't, you can't do both at the same time. You can't fix yourself and then fix, fix where you're going in life. You can do it at two times if neither one of them are in crisis. When we're talking about these guys who are, are lost because they are mentally having some, some damaged issues that they need to deal with, you're, you're, you can't, you have to put your time and your focus in that. So guys, don't doubt it. If you have, if, and you know who you are, if you're having some issues, send me an email, send, send Ben an email, find someone to talk to, to help you get, all right, support guys is a military term. I'm at the breach point. I can't get through. I call for support. That's all we're asking you guys to do. Call for support. If you don't like the word help, don't use help. Call, call your adjacent unit. That's right. <laughs> call it. Right. So I tell people all the time, you know, mental health problems are an invisible enemy. Nowhere in the military have we ever been taught to go out and to fight an enemy that is unknown by ourselves. We always go as a team member, right? And we go as a team member to fight enemies that we have massive amounts of intel on, that we know everything about. We know what their TTPs are. We know what they're probably going to do. Our, 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 you know, our risks, even, even when we make assumptions, all assumptions in the military are based on you know, assumptions based on fact and assumptions not based on fact. All those things are put together in a decision-making process as a team. So why, if you're taught that, would you ever want to go fight an unknown enemy by yourself? So think about that the next time you try to handle this stuff by yourself. Well, we've got too many guys like me and Bennett who are out here wanting to help you guys. So I find that there's that red zone time, especially after guys get out, of 10 months to a year. Mm -hmm. um, that's real crucial for things like this. Uh, to find your passion or your mission. Um, and if you don't within that time frame, a lot of times you find these guys start floundering. Right. Right. So now that's the other aspect of this uh, that I is something that I went through. My red zone time came later. Mm -hmm. uh, now I've transitioned twice. The first time it was almost immediate. Uh, I, I went from job to job to job for a year and a half and then went back in. The second time I got out, my red zone, frankly, didn't happen for almost 10 years because I had a really good job when I got out that just kind of like I flooded right into it and just rolled right in because it was around a lot of guys that were veterans. I carried a weapon, yada, yada, yada. The whole you also kind of knew what to expect, right? Right. Correct. So I, I was able to kind of hide in that. Mm -hmm. um, so then later on, I I broke. <laughs> Does that make sense? It makes perfect so, sense. So it was literally 10 years after I got out. So uh, I had all the issues during that time, but they were masked by other things. So so guys need to just know that they need to address things. Uh, and that's why I find that you just have to talk to guys or gals and find some mentors and get some stuff before you really are able to do this good work. You know. Yeah, I, I agree. That's all, that's all I have to add. Grandpa Bennett with his odes of wisdom. Always, <laughs> always wonderful to hear. We're going to go step by step with these six steps. We'll talk a little bit about each one. Step one of her six fresh ways to find your passion. Start with the right perspective. And this is what got me because we are the change your POV network. And guys, point of view is perspective. And Bennett, what is our, what is our, ta our tagline? Perspective is the vantage point of success. Your point of view is the same as your perspective. Start with the right perspective. And what it means by this is, is don't be short-sighted or close-minded. Um, one of the things that pitfalls that we have with coming out of the military is we are very black and white in the way we view things and very pragmatic, very matter-of-fact. And you know where, what is the evidence that proves one way or the other? We are kind of stuck in the way we think a lot of times. And what this is telling you is not don't be short-sighted or, or close-minded. Don't be afraid to be a guest on a podcast when you have when you're not out there looking to be a guest on a <laughs> podcast. Right? Does that make sense? So, oh yeah, it didn't occur to me. I was almost thinking I was getting scammed by Eddie. Like, well, why would you want me on? Even though at the time I'm doing talks and public speaking about this stuff, the podcast thing was. And if I was close-minded, I could have completely missed that opportunity. Be willing and ready to try new things. Well, with with part one, um, basically the, the the one thing that I have to add is the start with the right perspective is, is you also need to, especially for military members, and I, you need to leave your ego at the door. I mean, there's there, there's there's a place for ego, right? But if you don't know shit about being a civilian, 
you kind of have to leave that behind a little bit and be open. The perspective needs is you need to know who you are and what you can offer in a realistic format. Not, not I led, you know, people into combat because at the end of the day, it, ma- it matters, but it doesn't matter. Not, not in that world, not from, not from other people's perspective either. Um, they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. But what does that have to do with Cisco? Right. Right. So, or what does that have to do with me working as a stockbroker or whatever? It has nothing to do with it, frankly. I mean, it does. It, you know, you, you figure those things down the road, but, but your perspective is, is that you need to really be open-minded and to do that, you have to check yourself and leave your ego behind you uh and and then only use it when you need to so i agree i agree 100 if, if you if you're willing to accept the fact that you're the greatest thing in the world be willing to accept the fact that you have to prove that to other people so Correct. you know be willing to step in below where you believe you're supposed to be at if you're if you're so great and the job that's in front of you or the task that's in front of you is below you then prove to everyone how much it's below you as by knocking it out of the park like a friggin aaron judge home run so that mm-hmm. that's that's what i would say there Step number two, get out your metal detector. Now, this one I had to read twice because I didn't quite understand it, but here are some of the bullet notes for that one. Look for evidence of what you love to do and make a list of your loves and interests. All right, so guys, what this means is we all have things that we don't realize are skills that can be equated to other things. Making a list of what you love to do, Jeff's list. Jeff loves to talk. Jeff loves to teach. Jeff loves pop culture and media. You know, I make a list of those things. Uh, Jeff loves to be right. Jeff loves to debate. So, you know, much that that's what I'm talking about with making a list. You make a list of those things, you'll start to see some of these tasks that are unrelated individually, but they can come together and be relatable to some sort of a unseen or unaware focus or task that you can be able to perform. Yeah, basically what it comes down to is when you enjoy doing something, there's a very good chance you'll become passionate about it, right? And sometimes we don't know what that is, especially when we get out of the military, because there's things that you used to do that maybe you don't do anymore, and that now you're able to re-explore those things. Right. So really think about what you like to do or what, what gives you joy doing. I mean, if it's perusing through Facebook or whatever, dude, there's all kinds of shit you can do with that skill because it is, it becomes a skill. So at the end of the day, exploring your passions has to do with everything. So don't, yes, making a list would be a great idea, frankly. Thank you. I appreciate that. I came up with that part of my own. Uh, Step three, look for your umbrella. So look for your umbrella. You've got your big long list, right? And you want to find something the loves and interests all fit beneath. So if I'm out and it, let's let's look at all the the, inter- the things you love to do and your interests are, are raindrops and you want to find something about them all that fits under this one umbrella. Again, I love history. I love the military. I love teaching and I love talk shows, right? All of those fit under doing a veteran podcast that has a lot of history shows on it and teaching people about it. You see where I'm saying that's the umbrella that all those things fit under. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually rereading it because I was I was just looking like, let's say you love French, drinking coffee, playing with words, stuff like that. Like for me, yeah, right? Um, I I love the creativity of podcasting. For for me, I like the editing and the tech that goes into it. Right. You know what I mean? I like to add the music and do some different things like that. I like and enjoy making videos, that type of thing too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's really about looking at it and, and going, well, how do these all kind of fit together? Yeah. It's, it's more, I mean, and that's part of the whole perspective and, uh, you know, getting your metal detector out is uh, don't, don't short sight yourself to a task just at face value. If you're, if you're great at math, it doesn't mean you have to be a math teacher. I mean, you can be an accountant. You can be, I mean, you, you see where I'm going with that, people. It's, there, there, are, there are things that you love to do that are part of other bigger projects. And that brings us down to step number four, which is discern between a hobby and a, pro, and a, and a profitable passion. So if, if you intend to profit from your passion or your mission, be able to identify and perform the skills and tasks that are part of your passion that you don't have or are uneducated in. So... 
I, for example, I don't know how, I didn't know how to edit audio. I didn't know how to do marketing and I didn't know how to let others talk. <laughs> so, I mean, so right. those, those were three yeah. things I had to be able to address, be able to learn and be able to do that was not part of what my original skill set is. I have to identify them and I have to be willing and able to do it. Also, this also comes down to decide what it is you're like for me, this is a I have a job, a full-time job. This pot the podcasting and everything for me right now is something I do on the side and and I am I am fully willing and prepared to never make a dime doing it. Right. But if it was something that I had to do, then this would be something that would maybe not go on my top of the list because I have to find a way to make money. So you've got to be able to decide whether or not if it's going to be for money, you've got to find the things you have to be able to do to make the money. And if it's not going to be for money, you've got to find, am I willing to do this stuff knowing that there is going to be no profit for me on the back end? Or just because, and and also just because there's no profit in the podcasting part of this, right? That that it does allow you an avenue to share your message, which at some point that message could very well make you a living. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and in the meanwhile. So you have to see how, how you're possible hobby could actually fit into it, it maybe not being the actual uh profitable passion but how it can aid in that and that's things like podcasting and writing those are definite aids because you're you're not going to get well i guess there are people that get rich doing podcasting not rich but you know what i mean they, yes, they make yes. a good living as well as writers but that is hard freaking work so what I'm saying is, though, is it gives you credibility. It gives you, it's just use it as a tool to do other things. If you have a passion for it, you'll find a way to work it in. So right, and then that's uh, I think that's the that's the bottom line is I make I make this work regardless of my time because I'm a full time student and all those other things because I love it so much that I will find time. People tell me all the time, I don't know if I have time to do that. And my answer to them all the time is, if you want to do something bad enough, you will find the time to do it. For sure. For right. sure. So number five, expect the mutiny. And these are the two hardest ones of, of the uh, – these last two were the hardest, I think, of all the steps. Expect the mutiny. You are going to get naysayers. You are going to be criticized. And you are going to have what is the worst part of all of it. You are going to have self-doubt and fear of failure. You have to – you have – to avoid the naysayers, you have to prepare and be able to have a short memory when it comes to criticism, and you have to face your fear of failure and accept the fact that failure may happen, but that doesn't mean that you're a failure at it. No, it's just adjust, fire, and move on. I mean, that's that's it. Because failure is going to happen. It's it's not even a, an, a, an if, it's a when. So the best the best folks on the planet fail every day right at something so you just have to take it in stride and just go you really just have to push through i that's it i mean you you can't you can't do especially when it comes to something that you're really passionate about you can't you can't go all in unless you're really able to accept the facing fear and failure Right, and it, and it's a different it's a different kind of fear than fear of losing your life, and I think that the kind of fear that we're talking about here is something a lot of people don't really necessarily address in their personal lives day to day. There is a lot of untapped talent and unrealized potential in the world that is a casualty of fear and a casualty of um, not mentally preparing yourself for the naysayers, for the criticism, for the I didn't do this right. Guys, you're not going to learn and get any better if you don't fail. So sometimes failure, I look at it as sometimes failure is a necessary bridge that also can be a friend because I'm not going to learn how to do things right unless I fail. And, and we talked about it earlier. It also builds character. It, you learn from adversity. So failure is a learning experience. You just have to be honest about it and accept what it is. Period. True, true debt. And finally, guys, number six, find the limits of your bravery. So coming to the edge and leaping off the cliff, especially when it comes to something. All right, so getting out of the military is something, especially you guys who are still in, getting to the, getting out of the military is something that's going to happen. 
Um, I found it to be the scariest thing that I'd ever done was getting out of the military. Unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to face my fear of the cliff and jump off. I was, you know, medically retired and pushed out. When you have an option to do something that is going to, that is not, that is not guaranteed, dig down, guys. Find that bravery that's inside of you to take that step. And the reason why is two big statements. Fortune favors the bold and who dares wins. People that are, that are very, very, very successful in life took humongous chances to get there. You're never going to take any chances that are going to be so detrimental to you that unless you're, if you're doing the right thing, you're not, you know, you decide to take drugs and leap off the cliff. That's a bad idea. And that could lead to your death. But taking a chance, like taking a new job or, or going back to school, starting a podcast, these are things that you can do. You can be successful. You can do it. You have to be able to take that step off and leap into the unknown. So one of the best things that I've seen in a while to encapsulate what this talks about is Steve Harvey's you got to jump to be successful uh, motivational speech. And if you haven't seen that, just go to YouTube, type that in, Steve Harvey, you got to jump to be successful. Uh, it, it encapsulates everything that this is about. It's, you know, you, you have to jump and you might hit the side and bounce off and get scraped up. But as you're falling sooner or later, you're going to sprout wings and be able to fly. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Sooner or later, or you're going to die that there's one or the other. So it's leaping also gives you that push that shit, man. Yeah, I just have to do this. And, yeah. you know, it's like the guys on the bungee jumping bridge. Just push me, bro. Or yeah. guys jumping out of a plane or whatever. You know, I, it's just one of those things. Sometimes you do need a little help. But if you don't decide to do it, um, you're never going to achieve what you really are going after. Especially if it's at the bottom of that ravine. Right. So you have to jump. To get from point A to point B, you have to. You know, right, guys. So, it's I mean, simple. if you want to think about it in the sports sense of the words, uh, Michael Jordan has says it: you miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? Or, Correct. or you can think about it in a baseball terminology: to get into the Hall of Fame, you have to have a lifetime batting average of three hundred. That sounds really, really good, except it is based off of a scale of a thousand, which means three out of four times. That person goes to the to the plate and he strikes out, he pops out, he grounds out. Three out of four times. So the the level in professional baseball of what is considered the world's best are people that one out of three, one out or they one out of four 70% times, of seventy percent, yeah, seventy percent of the time they're failing, but they're willing to take that step. You have to believe me when I tell you that you are able to do anything that you want to do when you put your mind to it, and it all starts with that believing in yourself. And getting yourself out there. I, I just really it comes down to really taking a look at who you are or who you believe you are. And not being afraid that if you aren't the person you think you are to adjust and refine who that person is. And really just go after passion and, you know one of the best things I have was I've ever been taught since I got out and I really had to deal with, you know, post-traumatic stress and depression and anxiety. And I still deal with a lot of these things on, on a daily basis, but it's part of the reason that I do this podcast. And it's part of the reason I do what I do is because when it comes down to it and finding a new mission, we can wallow in our own self pity, or you can go out and help people. And what it comes down to is that you cannot be sad if you're helping people. Let's be honest. It's almost, it's, it's impossible. If you are adding value to the world and adding value to your community, you cannot be sad. So make it happen. Find a way to help. Find a way to, to do it. All right. And I guarantee you that after you do it a while, it's, you're going to come out of what you're coming out of and you're going to feel a lot better. You know, find that passion, find that new mission, 
go out there. Don't take shit. Go out, you know, kick ass and take names, period. It, it really is. It's not simple, but it's it's easy, but it's not simple. So go out. Or it's simple, but it's not easy. But if you just keep plugging away at it, just get on it and uh, things will work out. Yeah, guys, don't quit. Keep, keep at it. Keep keep hope alive if you want to say it that way. I mean, people are going to help you. People are going to give you exactly what you deserve when you give everyone else exactly what they need. You can do it. We, I believe in you. Uh, keep keep in touch with us on, on Change Your POV. Keep listening. Keep in touch with us. Tell us about your successes and how our shows have, have either helped you, uh, hurt you, or pointed you in the right direction because we're not going to be able to give you guys better content if we don't get feedback from you guys. Uh, so I, I challenge you again like I challenge everyone else. A dollar a month to help us give out good content is really not that much. Get on Patreon. There's, there's things you'll get for being on Patreon far more than just, uh, just feeling good about yourself by giving us a dollar. And I want to thank, I mean, I really want to thank Bennett. Thanks for coming on, man, with me because I really enjoyed having a show where it was just you and me. Because again, like you, I believe that you and I have a lot in common. And for it, sure, it's, it's other than the, 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 the differences in our voices and, and your, your <laughs> the fact that you were a Marine and, and I wanted to be a Marine. And then, you know, I was a Green Beret and you secretly <laughs> want to be a Green Beret. And oh, other than shit. these things, other than these things, we have much more in common than, than a lot of people know. And so, uh, Again, from the bottom of my heart, for you and Eddie and everyone else at the Changer POV Podcast Network, thank you guys for giving me, giving me a place for my passion to pour out and help other people. Yeah, man, for sure. You're welcome, always. It's freaking a pleasure. It is a pleasure. I know it's a pleasure. I, I'm, I, can't, I look at myself in the mirror every day and say, God, the world God, is lucky. The world is lucky to know a guy <laughs> like me. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for, coming, for uh, coming out and listening to the show.